Okay, so welcome to the short series on finite difference methods applied to differential equations. What we're going to talk about in this video is essentially how you derive a finite difference and how you can use that to solve a differential equation numerically. So let us recall that a derivative is essentially just a rate of change. So if you have something like a function here, and then you simply take two points and then approximate the derivative of this or the slope of this particular function at a point, you take two points that are equally spaced from that point, let's say x1 and x2, such that the spacing is something like h, and then you can approximate the derivative, essentially, if you take a limit, you're going to have something like this, so the derivative of the function with respect to x is just going to be f of x at some point h minus f of x over h and you know that the derivative is essentially just the limit of this so you can write it as the limit as h goes to zero because as you make the spacing between those two points much more smaller then those points are going to coincide at some point and then they're essentially going to be the same point so this gives you the uh, instantaneous rate of change of the function at that point now what happens when you drop the limit? Well, you essentially approximate the derivative by the following expression, which is what we call a finite difference, because you're going to take two points on, of that function, and then you're just going to divide it by a finite width h, and this is going to approximate the derivative at that point. Now this is what we would call a forward difference because essentially we're taking an initial point, which is the point where we're standing at, we're taking the next point in, in, in the sequence, and then basically we're approximating the derivative based on the next value of the sequence. There's another way that we can express the derivative, and it is by taking a point that is before, that comes before the current point, so we can take something like this, minus fx minus h, over h, and this is what we would call a backward difference. And essentially, th this is pretty much the same as that. There is really no difference. The, the accuracy of both of them is the same. So there really is no reason why we would prefer this over that. It's just a matter of convention. Maybe in some problem you want to start off with the previous value, or you want to define it in terms of the next value, but these two are equivalent. There is a very little difference between them. And there is another one which is worth mentioning, which is a central difference scheme, which has a much higher um, sort of accuracy. So basically what we're going to do, instead of taking two points that are consecutive, let's take two points that are around the central point, so let's say x plus h minus f of x minus h, and then what's going to happen is, with, because now the spacing has become 2h, then that's going to become the new spacing. So this is what we would call a central difference scheme. So we have a forward difference here, a backward difference, and then a central difference. So what does this all mean? Well, let's consider a very, very simple problem. Let's say we have a differential equation of first order that looks like this. And you will recognize this as an exponential decay problem. Then let's say that you're given an initial kind of population size. Let's say that N stands for population size. And let's say the initial popula population is 100. And now we would normally, we know that we can separate the variables here, integrate both sides, and then we get something like n as a function of t is equal to n naught e to the minus kt, where k is just the rate at which th this population is decaying. But instead of doing that, let's approximate this numerically. So how about we do the following? Let's say we do a forward difference. So we're going to replace this by that. So we're going to write n at t plus some step size h minus n at time t over h, which is just going to be the spacing between those two. It's going to be equal to k n at point t. And now what we're going to do is, given some initial value, which we have here, we're going to find the next value in the sequence. So let's say we have 
let's rearrange this. nt plus h is going to be a function of the previous step or the previous value, and this is going to equal nt equals sorry not equals minus k h n t. And it, it you will be seeing it is very common for uh, us to use the following notation. So instead of writing it like this, we're going to write it in terms of a finite difference equation. So we're going to use subscripts. We're going to start calling these um, subscripts basically just elements of a vector because the idea is you're going to approximate the solution in terms of a discrete number of values. So you're going to have, say, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. And you're going to form an array or a vector of values. So you're going to address the, the values of that vector based on this subscript. So we have the, the previous value is going to give you the new value. And it is going to be related by this equation here. All right. So what does this mean? Well, this means that we're going to start off at some point. Let's say n0. So n1 is going to be given by n0 minus k times h n0. And now what we need to do is we need to obviously choose a rate constant and uh, a step size. So let's try a step size of 1. And let's try a k value of 1. So this is going to be 100 minus 1 times 1 times 100. That's equals to 0. And then that means that n2 is going to be using the value of n1. And we know both of those are going to be zero. So in th in this case, what you're actually getting, if you continue this for a whole bunch of points, you're going to get a curve that looks like this. You're going to start start off at a hundred, and then in the next point, in line, you're just going to drop off very abruptly, and then it's just going to stay at zero. That doesn't really look like a good solution because remember, this is a smooth uh, exponential curve. This is not. So. How can we improve this? Well, obviously, we need to change the step size. And this is something that we will be doing quite a lot here. The step size is going to give you the accuracy of your numerical approximation to the solution. So instead of having k, h equals to 1, how about we use something like h equals to 0 0.1? Now, if we put that in here, so let's get rid of this value here first. We're going to have 100 minus 0 0.1, k is equal to 1 of 100, and this is going to be 90, right? Because we're taking 10% of this becomes 90. Then the value n2 is going to be n1 minus k h n1 equals to 90 minus 0 0.1 of 90. And then basically this is going to be 80 one and then if we take the next value n3 equals to n2 minus k h n2 equals to 81 minus 0 0.1 of 81 what's this going to be well this is going to be 8.1 so this minus that is going to be about 72.9 i believe because you have 0 0.1, yep, 72.9. And then you can keep going like this. So you can you can start to see that if you plot this solution, you start off at 100 here for your n, and then you have your time here. So the first value in, in line, so let's say in 1, 2, 3. Um, actually, this shouldn't be like that. It should be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, because remember, this is giving you the step size in terms of time. So this, the time is increasing by 0 0.1 seconds every time you give a step forward. So this is going to continue like this, 0 0.5 and so on. So at 0 0.1, we, so that's the first step, we're going to have 90. So that's going to be 90 here. So that's the second value in line. Then at 0 0.2, we're going to have 81 which is going to be around here. And then at 0 0.3, we're going to have 72.9. So that's going to be around here, 72.9. And you can start to see that now the curve looks a little bit more like an exponential decay curve because it is going like this and then it is going to reach some point. So it's going to decay very slowly.
it, it's gonna reach a constant value at some point so this is the whole idea behind numerical methods for the solution of differential equations that we're approximating the solution by a bunch of consecutive difference equations by simply substituting a derivative by a finite difference approximation and in the next video we will actually talk about how we can derive this by using Taylor series expansions about a point and then we're going to see how we can improve the accuracy of these methods and how we can solve problems numerically using computer software.